Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael. You're watching IDB. It's great to have you here. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 things that you need to stop doing on your iPhone and the right way to do these things. So last time I made this video, you guys seem to love it. So I figured I'd go ahead and make a part two. Let's go ahead, roll the intro and jump right in. So first up at number one is typing. Now I wouldn't say you're typing wrong on your iPhone, but there actually is a much faster way. So say you want to input the word people, let's say P-E-O-P-L-E. -E. You can see I typed it the normal way going from key to key. You can actually use a feature that is called quick path on your iPhone, where you can simply swipe from key to key. So I'll show you just how faster this is, P-E-O-P-L-E. -E. You can see I put in that word much faster than typing it. It also works with very long words. So let's go ahead and input the longest word in the dictionary and see if it works. I haven't even tested this yet, but I'm curious if it works. So anti disestablishment Aryanism. Wow. So you can see I was swiping. It looked like gibberish that I was swiping, but it actually picked up on the word I was trying to put into my keyboard. So I would definitely recommend trying out uh, quick path on your iPhone. It definitely takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you start swiping to type on your iPhone, you're never going to go back. So next up is searching for and opening an application. So we've all been there. We're looking for that one application we haven't used in a while. We end up scrolling through all of our pages. Then we end up at our app library and then we're scrolling through it in alphabetical order. There actually is a much easier way to do this and it is using Spotlight. So for this example, I'll use the settings app. So if I scroll down, type settings and then hit go. You can see just how fast it was to open that application. And this works for any app on your iPhone and you don't even have to finish typing the name of the application before you open it. You can see just how fast it is to open all these applications on my iPhone. So I definitely recommend using Spotlight to open any of your applications that you're trying to find. This next one is for screenshots. And when I show you this, it's gonna be one of those oh my gosh moments. I didn't even know my iPhone could do that. But whenever you are taking a screenshot on your iPhone, then you want to send it to someone. Most people think you click on it on the bottom left and then you either hit done and save it to photos or you press on the share button in the top right hand corner. However, there's actually a much easier way to do this without even going into this menu. So I'll click on delete and I'll take another screenshot. And then from the bottom right hand corner, if you press and hold on the screenshot right from here, it's going to go ahead and open up the share sheet if you press and hold. So this is a much faster way to instantly share any of your screenshots. Next up is you need to stop allowing every single app permission on your iPhone. So what does this mean? Well, you know, whenever you open an application that's new, you'll get a prompt that looks like this. A lot of people just ignore it and instantly hit allow. And this is something that you probably shouldn't be doing for every single application and every single prompt on your iPhone. So the way that you can check which applications are accessing all of your data is to go into settings, then click on privacy and security. And then you'll see here is everything that your iPhone uh, is going to be tracking within your apps and what is turned on and off. So for this example, I'll choose location services. And then you'll see that we have a bunch of apps that are using my location when I'm using the app, which is okay. But what we're looking for is applications that are always using our location. So this one is for Liberty. This is my security system. This one is okay. But I don't think I want this rain application to always be able to see my location. So I'll click on this and I'll change it to while using app or widgets. And this just makes it so my location is not always being shared with the application. It's only gonna be shared when that information needs to be refreshed or when I open up the application. And you can check all of your privacy settings inside this page. So whether it's something to do with your files and folders, uh, your contacts, that's a big one, and also sometimes your wallet. It definitely is important that whenever you download a new application, instead of just clicking allow, 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 actually read the prompt and make sure what it says. If you click allow, you can change all of your settings inside of here. Next up is you need to stop recording your video at the default resolution set by your iPhone. So inside of your camera, when you go into video mode, you'll see on the top right hand corner, it says HD 30. And this is going to be recording your videos at 1080p at 30 frames per second. And this is the iPhone default. Now this default is still okay and the 1080p quality is still going to look fine on your iPhone. But if you are spending a lot of money on an expensive iPhone, you probably want to get the best video quality. Now there are two ways that you can change this. One is you can simply tap where it says HD and change it to 4K. This is only going to be a temporary change, but right now I'll show you how you can actually change the default video recording resolution. So go into settings, then click on camera. 
And then you wanna change your record video option to either 4K 30 or 4K 60. I'm gonna do 4K 60 because I like to max out my recording resolution. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna make your videos a lot sharper and a lot smoother. It is gonna take up a lot more storage on your iPhone, but like I said, if you have a camera system that is this good on your iPhone, why not record the best quality video possible? This next one is for your battery percentage. You need to stop guessing your battery percentage or going into control center in order to see it because there actually is a much easier way to do this. So you wanna go into settings and then go into battery settings and then simply turn on battery percentage at the top. And as you can see now, it's gonna show our percentage right up here in the top right hand corner. So this is much easier than A, guessing what it is and B, going into control center to see it. This next tip I wanna show you is for all of your app icons on your home screen. You need to stop thinking that all of these app icons have one purpose, which is to simply open up the application because all of these app icons can actually do many things. Take for example, settings. If you press and hold on settings, you can see we're able to access our battery settings, our cellular settings, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. So if I click on this, I can go right into my Bluetooth settings. It also works with every single app icon. So for Safari, if I press and hold on it, you can see I can show my reading list, my bookmarks, I can open a new private tab and more. I can also do it for messages. So if I press and hold on messages, I can see all of my most recent text chains. And like I said, it works for pretty much every application. One of the ones I use it for the most is for camera. So if I instantly wanna start taking a video, I can do this and then click on video and then it instantly opens in video mode. So I'd say this is the number one thing that a lot of iPhone users forget their iPhone can do. You can save a lot of time by simply using haptic touch on all of your app icons. And I have another one for the keyboard on your iPhone. So you need to stop typing without feedback on your iPhone. There's a way where you can turn on haptic feedback so the vibration motor in your iPhone is giving you slight haptics when you type on the keyboard and it feels so much better when you're typing. So inside settings, you wanna click on sounds and haptics then scroll down and click on keyboard feedback. Now you can choose if you wanna have sound turned on, but I definitely recommend turning on haptic feedback. That way when you're typing on your iPhone, you're gonna feel slight vibrations with every key press and it makes typing on your iPhone a million times better. And next up is for Safari. You need to stop using the default version of Safari because this is pretty boring. If you click on this edit button, you can actually change a lot with your Safari app on the iPhone. The first thing is you can simply add a background image to make it look a little bit more fun. So I'll choose this one, and then when I go home, you can see my Safari instantly looks a lot better. But you can also do a lot more. If you click on edit, you can see we have all of these tabs that we can turn on. So for example, I'll turn on privacy report, and then here it's gonna say in the last seven days, Safari has prevented 172 trackers from profiling me. And you can turn on a bunch of these different options. So if you use a lot of iCloud tabs, you can turn that on. If you wanna see suggested websites, you can also turn that on. So a lot of people just use Safari at the default settings, but there are a lot of things you can change and really make it more personal. And the final thing I wanna show you that you have to stop doing on your iPhone is redialing phone numbers. Cause there's actually a really easy way that you can work around this. So I'll just put in a, a random number and then I'll hit on call. And I'll quickly end that call before it connects. Now, if I want to dial that number again, instead of going into recents and then dialing that number, all I have to do is simply press on the call button like this and it's gonna put in that number right there. So let me know in the comments if you learned anything new. I always love making these videos because there's always that aha moment where you realize that you're doing something wrong on your iPhone or something that could be done a lot faster. So let me know what you thought in the comments. And also if you have any other suggestions or tips and tricks for our viewers, also comment those down below as well. If you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative or helpful or anything, please drop a big like and also subscribe if you haven't already. With all that said, my name is Michael with IDB. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.